Sometimes it's good to know enough about your colleague's discipline to be dangerous. Well, not dangerous, but enough to carry on a conversation, which is pretty important as a product manager. This is Chris Rader from Center Code, and today I'm joined by Rayana Zaman. In this episode, we chat with a product manager from the State Employees Credit Union in North Carolina about her time in development, product marketing, and product management. Rihanna shares her insights and skills from transitioning from a developer into a product manager. So when I was working as a developer, I would ask so much questions to other teammates, like in the salespeople or product management, even everyone I can find. I would ask like, why are you building it? What's the business case? What's our business? Like, how do you make money? Lessons learned from her days as a product marketer. So you can have the best product, but if you don't know how to market, if you're not going for the right channel or you're not communicating to the user in a way that they can connect, your revenue will be zero. So. And the role that users play in informing decisions and product development. I think the involvement of the user is very important, especially in the early stage, even more than the later. Um, there's a famous saying of Henry Ford, right? If you ask the user what do you want, they will ask for a faster horse. Mm -hmm. So that just shows that user usually focus on um, improving existing product. They don't necessarily focus on invention. Today, I'm joined by Rayana Zaman. Uh, uh, Rayana, thank you so much for, for joining. I know we got to meet in uh, in Cary um, a couple months ago, so that was a really great time, and I thought you'd be a great guest to have on the podcast. Uh, so thank you for, for joining us. Thanks for having me. So first off, I know when we, when we, we first had a conversation, about like, what would we talk about on the podcast? You mentioned that you spent time as a developer. Um, and I know that's a common wish for developers. Like, oh, I want to get more into the business side. I want to figure out how to get into product management. So how how did you, like when you were a developer, how did it shape what you do now in product management? Um, I would say it really helped me to be a better working partner for the developer because since I was a developer, I know that it would be a challenge a developer go through. The technical complexity it goes into delivering a product. So it made me definitely a better partner for the developer team. Um, yeah. Yeah. I always heard like, um, I don't have a lot of development experience personally, but like, um, know enough to be dangerous, right? Like enough to be like, you gotta be somewhat competent in the area that you're speaking to. I feel like that's a, a helpful skill. Like you are shaping uh, right now, I know a, a software product, a, a, a mobile app, and like being able to talk to developers on the other side in their language, in, their, in, their, in the way they communicate seems like it'd be an effective strategy. You know, I got some questions in the interview sometimes, since you are a developer, how do you uh, manage not getting too involved with the developer? So I guess mm. in my defense, I just know enough to have a productive conversations. I haven't been developing for many years to be like so involved to overstep or telling them how to do it. So I guess I just know enough to have those technical conversations. So that's kind of really helpful. Yeah, it's kind of cool too. It's like if you know, if you know too much, you can get dragged into it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I, I it happens a lot with me of like, oh man, I could just do that myself, right? Like I, I'll, I will just be able to go do that thing. So yeah, uh, that that makes a lot of sense. That it's enough to have the conversation, but not necessarily enough to do everything your yourself. Yeah, not over sticks on the developer toes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And, and I, I, I briefly mentioned this in the, the first conversation is you did make that jump from from developer development into product. So like what what skills would you say were the most beneficial as you were making that transition? So um, I would say definitely the curiosity. Um, as a developer, my focus was to know how to build a product. And as a product manager, my focus is to find out why should I even build this product. So there's a 
different mindset a little bit, but I'll tell you the story. How did I get into product management? So when I was working as a developer, I would ask so much questions to other teammates, like in the salespeople or product management, any and everyone I can find. I would ask like, why are we building it? What's the business case? What's our business? Like, how do we make money? Um, I remember asking this to a product manager. I was like, can I go with you to a client meeting because I want to understand their perspective. She just looked at me and she's like, I never got that question from any developer before. She's like, you know what? You should try into product management. I'm sure you'll be good at it. That's the first time I realized that's even an option for me. Um, since I'm from computer science background, I didn't even know that's an option for me. And I started looking into it like, oh, and then I was like, yeah, that's something that looks like something I'll really enjoy. So I guess I just had the curiosity yeah, that led me into the product management. Yeah. Curiosity is such a, a useful, useful, especially for a product manager. Like you have to be able to ask those questions of your users. You have to be able to ask them of yourself, of your um, your business, so your stakeholders, executive teams, like you, you're going to have to kind of poke and prod to get to why we need to understand why when we're building products. So that is definitely a useful skill when the the why might be, I don't hear, like you said, I don't hear a lot of developers asking why their curiosity and um, creativity comes in how, right? So like yeah. a lot of time. Absolutely. You, it's that you, you said the the how it's like, okay, but I can be creative within this realm, right? Like I can be creative within the, how do I, how would I build this um, mm-hmm. in the right way? And there's the mindset for that. Like that is yeah. a very good developer or engineering mindset to have where you're right on the product side. We want to really understand, okay, let's get to what the problems are, what we're trying to solve, why we're trying to do it, because we need to then translate that. We need to then find a way for the product to be able to sell that, to convince people that that's what they need to be doing. Yeah. Okay. And just along that same lines where we're moving our way into like how we sell and, and market those products, you had a time spent as a product marketer? Yes. Yeah. I have to six and that's, years. You had six years? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good chunk of uh, of time spent on product marketing. So, it's it's interesting like a lot of times product management if you don't have a product marketer, you end up having it to do it yourself, right? Like you, as a product manager, you just got to figure out how to how to get those pieces of product marketing over. Um so, how do you think those roles benefit each other? So, if you have two teams, if you have a product marketing team and you have a product management team, how are those two roles helping e- each other? I think it's very interconnected. So as a product manager, we focus on um, the value we create for the product, uh, for the user, but the product marketing team help us to communicate that value to the users in a way that resonates with yourself, mm-hmm. the user. So. You can have the best product, but if you don't know how to market, if you're not going for the right channel or you're not communicating to the user in a way that they can connect, Mm -hmm. your revenue will be zero. So no one's going to use your product if they don't know about it. So um, also it helps us to, when we're building the product, keep that in our mind, like what kind of user we are trying, targeting, what's the channel we're using to target the user. So building the product in a way that resonates with the users. Yeah. And you think that's the marketing always has the user in mind, right? Cause they're trying to communicate, mm-hmm. trying to push it out. So that's they're constantly uh, doing uh, market good... research. So... Yeah. You got, got to get in front of users. Um, that kind of leads me off to my, my, my next discussion is so as a product marketer, we're doing market research as a product manager, you have some involvement with customers. So like, how do you, how do you feel users are involved at the various stages of product development? How user are involved. Uh, I think the involvement of the user is very important, especially in the early stage, even more than the later. Um, I was listening to one of the 
product workshop and the speaker said something like listen to your product but don't listen to your pro listen to your user but don't listen to your user by that what he meant listen to your user enough to understand your pro their problem but do not listen do not always listen what solutions they want you to implement um, there's a famous saying of Henry Ford, right? If you ask a user what do you want, they will ask for a faster horse. Mm -hmm. So that just shows that user usually focus on um, improving existing product. They don't necessarily focus on inventions or finding new way to solutions their problem. So that's probably the job of the product manager to do that. So we definitely need to hear the product, uh, the user, to know what's their problem they're facing or trying to solve, but not necessarily listen to the solutions they offer. Yeah, it's it's tough because like that's one of my my favorite quotes, um, the the Henry Ford one. the The struggle with it is the real note in there is the solution, right? Like mm -hmm. users don't necessarily have the best solution to their problem. So in listening to the user, you have to get like a, just a step beyond like, why if like, why would they need faster horses? Like what is the the problem that they're actually trying to, what is their need? Um, not okay. what they think that the solution yeah. is. Yeah. In this example, they want speed. They don't necessarily yeah. need a faster horse. They just need speed. So there's better way to get them there than faster horses. Which is not yeah. interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> and with, well, you can get some, some people have faster words, but it's, it's interesting. It's like, it's not just one user too. Like you get to, as a product manager, you get to see a group of users. You get to see your users. You get to see your market and you get to make those educated decisions of like, okay, these, you know, hundred people, these 10,000 people have problems, these problems. Um, and this, this group thinks that these are the solutions and this group thinks that these are the solutions and you can kind of take, okay, well, I understand our business. I understand technology. I understand my users problems. Now I just need to connect them. I need to find what the solution is that solves that problem that aligns with the business that uses, um, you know, whatever technology. So like, you get a unique pers uh, perspective. Yeah. Um, along with that line, as a product manager, my job is not to like, come up with the greatest solutions. My job is to find the greatest solutions. It could be developer, it could be my user, it could be like any other business partner. Just find the best possible solution. Yeah, and it could come from, like you said, it could anyone. come from anywhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> it could, it it could from come from anywhere. the, yeah, it, can, it could come from the users. It could come from like um, internal feedback coming from a, a developer of like, hey, have we thought about this? And it's like, you get to, you get to digest that. You get to make those decisions on whether or not this is the right path yeah. to go on. And I, I know you said something earlier about like you you want to get an early early feedback is always the best feedback, right? Because mm -hmm. we haven't made as many decisions yet, right? Or the fidelity of the product that we have hasn't necessarily evolved yet. It, it's not high fidelity. Yeah. It's not fully mm -hmm. coded. It's not. You know, there's, there's now, uh, it's, it's not live yet. So we haven't spent as much resources. So it's easy to get those problems early on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And one, it's one thing that to, I've, go ahead. Sorry. It's, it's easier to fix early on also because we don't have a lot of active user. Once you have huge number of active user, it's always very, much more challenging to fix things. Yeah, I, there's an old, very, very old at this point, IBM study that says it's it's 10 times more costly to fix an issue after you've launched the product because it has to go through um, the customer support channels. It's got to be triage, and then eventually it'll get back to the developer who's probably already working on something else or that developer's gone and you have to, like a new developer has to yeah. go figure out, okay, what is this issue? And they spend more time in it and then it's got to go all the way back up the chain and back out um and that's that's tends to be where the where the cost comes in um one one interesting note that kind of always lingered with me is i i grew up in market research and user research so we do surveys we do interviews we get some prototypes out there and every step of the way in development 
our product is getting somewhat more baked, right? Where yeah. we're going from a concept to, okay, I have some designs for it. Maybe I have wireframes. Maybe I have more of a clickable PDF or like just a clickable UI for people to get through. And as that gets further along, I, I tend to have more questions, more questions pop up, right? So I, I did a study early on. I had users, I, I know they have these problems. Um, I've done a survey, I've interviewed them. Um, but now I'm, you know, six months, I'm nine months away from when I did that research. How, how important is it to make sure that while it's important to do early research, how important is it to do more continuous and make sure that's always happening? Um, and making sure that we get some validation towards the end of development. I think it's absolutely important to be validated along the way, just so that your product is relevant in six months. Yeah. A lot of things can change. If you're talking about specific industry, the specific industry could have changed in six months. So it's absolutely important to validate along the way. Yeah. I feel that. I mean, the pandemic happened what felt, felt yeah. like overnight, right? And we've changed yeah. the way we work. We changed the way that we interact with people. It was a much different environment. And you could have done research nine months ago that said people love yeah. going to restaurants. And oh, there's they're, they're no more restaurants now to go to. <laughs> yeah. So, so keeping up on that. And, and, and around that that vein, we, we talked about getting customers involved. Where Where do you see customers being involved in, say, um, those those previews, those those betas, those um, public betas. Like, how are you getting users involved towards the end? But but just before you're about to to launch, just before that launch period. Um, so it depends on, I guess, company to company. How do they do it? Like in my previous experience, we had a group of user that we kind of curated depending on the user size, different grouping, and different criteria. So we will reach out to them first to try out the prototype, get their feedback, and then go to a bigger group. So we had a curated user group. Okay. So it's a group of people. You collect that feedback. You get to... Are you, are you making... I always hear this debate, and I'd love to get your take on it. Um, sometimes beta is too late to make some changes. Um like we, we, we can't necessarily change certain things because we're, we're almost out the door. Is it worth the, is it worth the effort to make some changes at this point? Um, and I know that I've heard the other side of it where we have to be able to make this change. If we go out the door with this, it's gonna, it's gonna flop if it's a brand new product, or we're going to get a lot of flack from, you know, uh, the, the brand's going to take a hit because we released something that's, that's not working reliably. <laughs> So I am, I think I'm for the quality over deadlines. Okay. I don't mind pushing the deadlines if I have to do, deliver the quality product. But I guess organization to organize, organization, it differs how, what they prioritize. But I strongly believe quality over the deadline. Mm -hmm. That's good. I, and how are you communicating that to your, so say you have, a product to so see you have your, your mobile apps coming out and you know, you run into some issues and it's like, Hey, we're going to miss deadline because we want to focus on the quality. Are you getting, are you getting some pushback from executives or they're yeah. like, no, we prioritize quality. Um, or it's like, it's okay to, to miss the deadline or no, we, we can't miss deadline for promise this to certain people. We need to get it out the door. It's a lot of pushback. It actually comes more from salespeople, executive course, or our product marketing team too, right? They probably already booked some channel to communicate. They have their strict deadlines that they need to go to press with. And I'm yeah. saying like, no, I can't. So that's actually ch very challenging from them, them, their perspective too, to push the deadline. But I guess you just have to communicate with your part, all the partners that's involved and give them your logic and reasoning so you can convince them. Like, it's really hard. I, I understand it's just not about like, oh, I just push the date. It's like a lot of coordinations have to happen to push a date. So yeah, you need to have a lot of, I guess, solid reasoning for that and have enough data to convince all of your stakeholders. And 
definitely communicate like as as early as you can great great advice i think that's that's good you got to bring that that logic the reasoning and the the data all into that group to be able to a lot of those groups i'd say are i don't want to say they're slightly more emotional but they're they're definitely driven by certain aspects marketing wants to get it out the door because they're trying to get they're trying to help sales get sales, right? Like they need to get the yeah. leads. They need to get the adoption. They need to push stuff through. Sales needs to hit numbers by the end of the quarter, and the months, yeah. whatever, whatever cycles they're, they're on. Um, so bringing that into the conversation of this would still be better for you because if maybe if you go out the door, it, it could cause bigger problems. Like you could have people churning. You can have people returning. You could have people... Um, leave the product for a competitor because we didn't solve the right problem. So you're better off um, maybe halting or pushing this back a, a, a couple of weeks so we don't um, mess with building, our, our customers. Yeah, building user trust takes a lot of time. Yeah. And ruining it is as easy as like just shipping a wrong product. So yeah. Can happen in an instant, right? Like you could have yeah. loyal customers that you can have a bad experience with and they're just saying, I'm done. You can, yeah. you could have pushed them over the edge with something, uh, and it's much harder to get back a, a new customer, uh, than it, it is takes to, to a lot of time to, to build trust. So, yeah. Cool. So I have a couple of rapid fire questions. I'd love to get your take on. So we're just doing yeah. uh, shorter answers. Um, they range from the, from the product management space to a little bit about talking about beta. Well, obviously we're, we're very focused on beta here. Um, so I'm going to throw them at you. Love to get your take. Uh, first one up, what is your favorite activity in product management? Solving problem. Yeah, solving problems. Love it. Most challenging thing to do in product management? Prioritize features. You have to balance between um, stakeholders, business, technical complexity, a lot of different deadlines. It's So prioritizing the product. Prioritizing the features. Yeah. Most challenging thing to do when you get to that 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 beta program or that that public beta phase. In my experience, uh, getting all the feedback from so many different channels, putting or organizing it in a way where I can actually get a insightful or a insight that's actually actionable. That's mm -hmm. like really a lot of mental work yeah. all right this one might be a little tougher one misconception about beta so one thought about beta that is probably wrong but everyone kind of has that uh, what they think is the, the problem is going to be i think when people hear beta they just think it's about finding bugs it actually has a bigger purpose of like validating your product market fit validating your user satisfaction um so I think people just focus on bug fixing, but that's not, there's a bigger purpose than that. Yeah. Favorite thing, when you get your, your, your product, when you get your software, your mobile app, this next version into a beta, what's your favorite thing? Getting users feedback, seeing the excitement or angry sometimes, yeah. <laughs> whatever that feedback <laughs> is, getting <laughs> life feedback. Yeah. All right. Coffee or tea? coffee okay morning person or are you more a, a night owl you like being up at night morning morning so you're a morning person same same uh how do you unwind say like after work how do you unwind usually playing with my fire baby i have a 15 month old dog so yeah nice um are you watching anything right now on tv i'm watching did lasso Okay, uh, Ted Lasso. Season two, yeah. Okay. My, my, most of the people at um, Center Code would, would love to hear that. Um, best piece of advice you've been given professionally? Listen more than you speak. It goes actually both professionally and personally. Listen more than you speak. It helps you understand people's perspective, which is important in professional and personal life. Great. All right. That's, that's it for my questions. Rihanna, thank you so much for joining us. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for having me. Cool.